five here. God bless you. This is the day the Lord hath made. We shall continue to rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We thank God for all of those who are with us here uh, that are physical and those who are with us are virtual. We pray that you had a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. The fact that you're alive and clothing your right mind, got a couple of aches and pains, but guess what? You're still here, and that is just a wonderful thing, even in these days and times. We are praying for all those who are sick, sick and afflicted, those who are going through bereavement. We're praying for the family of the 15-year-old, just uh, atten- was, a, was a student in Westover, and uh, who was uh, shot and murdered this week, and we're praying for him and his family, as well as the Westover school family and all persons concerned you just never know in these days and times what's going to happen and when so we cover our children and our children's children our loved ones our spouses our friends and even our enemies we cover them in prayer in this uh, season the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy but we thank god for jesus christ he said i've come to you might have life and have it more abundantly and during this wonderful time of thanksgiving we ask that you would continue to remember that jesus is the reason for the season and we thank you for all of those on giving tuesday that gave to simon temple and all other nonprofits that we are able to help those in our community we are helping and even feeding today we are uh, feeding and clothing and taking care and i just want to thank all of you that are watching for giving to simon temple ministry on Giving Tuesday yesterday, and for those who even gave today, know that all of the funds that you give and all of the seed that you sow go to outreach and to help those in our community, our schools, and also to feed and clothe those who are in need. So we thank God for that. We thank God for uh, the new pastor, uh, the Reverend Dr. Keith Tillett, who will be here on this weekend. We look uh, forward to him and Miss Carrie Tillett and their children being here with us as we welcome our new pastor. And for those who are just tuning in for months and you don't know what happened, you just going to have to check the video. Amen. It's, uh, uh, we look forward to them coming. I uh, talked with him, uh, texted him this morning, and he is uh, trying to make his way this way. So we're going to be patient with him, give him time, and we're praying for the St. Paul family out of Trenton, New Jersey, which he his last Sunday was this past Sunday. So it's quite a transition for him. So be praying for him and his family as they get ready to come here and uh, do kingdom work and finish the assignment. So we thank God for each and every one of you. As we uh, go forward, we want to talk about today uh, how to experience perfect peace, how to experience perfect peace. We're talking about peace because things are so unsettled right now. I don't care where you look, there's turmoil, there's confusion, there's envy, there's strife, there's jealousy, there's war, there's rumors of wars, there's uh, pending uh, uh, variants to the COVID virus, uh, not uh, Delta, but now Omicron that's out there and it has not hit, but it's inevitable, uh, unfortunately, that it will probably enter into the United States. But I have an assurance and have peace in my mind that if God kept us through COVID, the Delta variant, he gonna keep us through Omicron and whatever else comes because God is still faithful to us. And it's so important that we have peace. There's gotta be peace. It's peace uh, right now as you get ready to go into Christmas. Not y'all, because y'all are mature Christians. You're not worried about how much money you're gonna spend on somebody. Uh, but there's some people out there that's panicking right now, saying, where am I going, where do I borrow the money to buy stuff for folks I don't even like? You know, that no peace. Uh, there's persons right now because their contract have ended. We're in, a, we're in a military community. A lot of people's contract ends at the end of the year, and they ain't got re-up yet. They're, they, 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 they're, they're going, you know, haywire, wondering what's going to happen. Is, 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 am I going to have a job? We're going to say you got to have peace. There are persons dealing with medical issues right now and don't know what's going to happen and how it's going to outcome. But you understand the God of all grace, after you suffered a little while, will be able to establish, strengthen, and settle you. You got to have peace. Folks are going through things with their families and, and their children and their children's children. But you got to have peace. The government say they're going to do this. Uh, people are coming out to run for this. People, we wonder who's going to be where. You got to have peace. And when we have peace, we have the peace of God. But most of all, you got to have peace in your spirit. See, a lot of people don't understand 
that the world can have anything going on they want to have going on. But when you have peace in your spirit and peace in your mind, you're able to go through things like other people are not able to go through. You're going through the same situation seemingly, but the spirit of peace is on you. And the only way you're going to do this is be able to connect with what we talked about for, for weeks now. You've got to understand that, that, that trouble will come, attack will come, but your mind has to be renewed. Because when you've gone through and God has brought you through, he will give you the spirit of peace. If I took care of you through that, I'll take care of you through this, but you cannot panic. You cannot, this is not the time to panic. This is not the time to run. This is not the time to quit. This is not the time to give up. You've got to wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. You got to wait on the Lord. Everybody say peace. peace. So as we deal with peace, we're going to deal with this uh, study five on how to experience perfect peace. We're going to go to Isaiah 26. And we're going to read verses 1 through 3. Isaiah 26, uh, verses 1 through 3. So as we get ready to do Isaiah 26, verses 1 through 3, I want, Reverend McLean, I want you to go to Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Sister Duncan Carter, I want you to go through Mark 4, 36 through 41. Mark 4, 36 through 41. Um, uh, Doc Newton, Jeremiah 614 and Philippians 47. Jeremiah 614 and Philippians 47. Amen. And we'll, we'll get to some more in just a minute. All right. So first Isaiah 26, one through three, Isaiah 26, one through three. In that day, the song will be sung in the land of Judah. We, we have a strong city. God makes salvations its walls and ramparts. Open the gates that the righteous nation may enter, the nation that keeps faith. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust him. He will keep you in perfect peace for those whose mind is stayed on him. Notice it says steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Steadfast means I'm keeping my mind on him. You cannot decipher between the two or delineate between the two and expect to have the peace of God because what you do is you'll serve two masters. And the Bible tells us no man or woman can serve two masters for they're going to love the one and they're going to hate the other. So your mind has to be on Christ. That does not mean that you won't have issues and worry sometimes. How many of you at some point in time in your life, in your Christian walk, you found yourself slipping off into a worrisome state where you started to worry about some stuff? That does not mean you don't have the peace of God. It's how you act and how you recover and how you retrieve yourself from going that way. You ever had your mind going down a bad road and you had to shake yourself, oh, 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 no, 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 uh -uh. I ain't even going down that road because you, that, that's, 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 that's the enemy trying to steal your peace. Or you're waking up in the middle of the night um, um, various times and you keep waking up. You can't go back to sleep because you got your mind on stuff. You've got to make sure that you feel your heart and your spirit with the things of God and with the word of God. That's why it's good to have devotional before you go to sleep and devotional when you wake up because you're going to face the enemy on both sides. So when you go to sleep, you, the dreams, how many of y'all ever had a bad dream? Amen. Some just had it last night. Amen. So, so understand something. The enemy works in so many ways. So he's trying to get you. Then you get up and you start worrying about what you dreamed about. You've got to learn if I got peace, I'm not going to believe necessarily what I dream. That's why when people say, um, Pastor, I dream this, um, what's going to happen to me? I said, have you asked God what's going to happen to you? God's going to keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. That is something, see, the problem is you don't know the origins it came from. So before you go and get a book to find out what a dream means, you've got to understand where it comes from. The enemy comes not only to steal, kill, and destroy in the natural, he comes to do it in the spiritual. So what he would do is fill your mind with stuff that has nothing to do with your destiny or what God has for you. In fact, a lot of times when you're on your way to destiny and what God would have for you, the enemy will come and try to sift you and try to get your mind off the things of God so you will sit there and live in worry and not live in peace. 
That does not mean that you are not affected by the things that go on in your life. That does not mean when you get a bad doctor's report or you hear about a shooting somewhere and that's going on, that makes you aware. That does not mean that in your flesh side you don't wonder what's going on, but when you've got the spirit of peace and you've got that in your mind and keep it steadfast on him, those things will come, but it will not overtake you. And that's the problem when we deal with our spiritual peace. We've got to be careful that we don't let things overtake us. And when they overtake us, that don't mean it won't come to your mind. That don't mean that you won't have a thought. Just a while ago, I was driving down the road, and, and, and I just happened to be going maybe one or two miles over the speed limit, maybe just one or two, one and a half miles over the speed limit. So as I'm going, I mess around and see a man with a blue light. And I said, Lord, I said, Jesus, I said, oh, Lord. And I start talking in the unknown. I said, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, don't let, bro, bro, I'm telling you, uh, I said, Brother Doctor, I said, I said, Lord, let that, let that joker be going somewhere. I love them. I want them to protect and serve. I just don't want them to be able to mess with me today. And, and, and when the cop came, I was sitting there, my heart was going boom, 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 boom. And I know y'all don't never speed and y'all don't worry about nothing. You let a blue light get behind you. That thing, your heart go boom, 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 boom. I said, foot started shaking. I said, Lord, have mercy. Let me go ahead and get my registration license out right now. And I said, uh-uh. I said, unname it. He ain't coming after me. <laughs> he ain't coming after me. He going to go around me. When that joker went past me, my heart stopped beating so fast. I said, hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. And now, now understand this. That was not somebody going, well, that's favor. He passed by you. No, that was God's warning to slow down. Because if you are doing stuff that's out of what the will is, you're going to always live in fear. You won't live in peace. Because if I won't speed, I'd have had peace. And but because I was going 1.2 miles over the limit, I had a little detrepidation in my heart. So for the rest of the time on the way here, I dropped it down to what I was supposed to. When you've got peace in your mind, you've got to understand, sometimes you add to your non-peace. It is not always the enemy. Stop blaming the enemy for everything. Sometimes it's you not keeping your mind stayed on him. You're worried about stuff that God said I already got handled. He's already taken care of it. But because we let our minds wander and let our flesh take over, our thoughts that we're supposed to be able to keep on God and the things of God, we will let that, that our peace uh, be able to vaporize away from us because now we'll fill with worry. And we know if you get worried and continue to worry and stay in a worry state, you'll become a double-minded man or woman. And I told you before, you'll become unstable in all of your ways. You won't be able to sleep right. You won't be able to think right. You won't be able to work right. You won't be able to drive right. How many of y'all ever been in a situation where you had worry on your mind and you left? And, and, and to add to that, you left your job and made it home and don't even realize what you passed on the way home because your mind messed up. Y'all know you didn't happen before. Uh, it may not happen recently, but you were like, oh, I didn't believe I, I, oh, I passed that because your mind was so preoccupied. And when your mind gets so preoccupied, you're subject to accidents. You, you're subject to being able to get off course. How many of you have been, had so much stuff on your mind and let your peace get away from you, this peace of God get away from you, that you even passed your exit? You missed your turn, and you wonder where you at because you're sitting there worried about that thing. That is the same way the enemy works. He wants you to stay off course, not just in the natural but in the spiritual because if I can keep your mind uh, away from peace and keep it worried, you'll never get to where God is trying to take you. Amen? So as we continue, it's a wonderful promise that God gives us, and he gives us in the midst of anything that we go through. And I want you to understand there's no promise anywhere in the Bible which encourages to us to believe that while we are in our earthly bodies, we shall experience freedom from trouble. But there is something far better. There is a promise of peace in the midst of trouble. So while, while Jesus never tells us we're not going to have trouble, he does not ever tell us that we're not going to have an attack. He does tell us that we can have the peace of God while we're going through that. And that's in that first paragraph there. I want whoever has Galatians 5, 19 through 21 to read that for me. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Reverend McClain.
Thank you, ma'am. If you are wondering sometimes why you cannot find peace in the midst of things you're going through, sometimes read through those works of the flesh and see if you're participating in them. Because those things will bring chaos and disorder to your life and not allow you to have perfect peace. You cannot live in sin and think you're going to have perfect peace. You cannot go against God's will and think you're going to have perfect peace. You can't cuss folk out and think you're going to have perfect peace. You cannot hate your family members and love folk that don't even love you and think you're going to have perfect peace. You cannot sit around and not forgive folks and think you ain't going to have perfect peace. See, we get it messed up because we think they did it to us. I ain't got to forgive them. No, you got to forgive them even if you ain't got to deal with them. There has to be forgiveness. And a lot of times because folks have unforgiven sin in their spirits and in their hearts, they don't live in a spirit of peace. So you send up their word about somebody of what they did to you 10 years ago and they going on with their life and you still waking up in the middle of the night wondering when they're going to apologize to you. You ain't got no peace. The fact that God gave you everlasting life, eternal life and life right now ought to give you such a peace that you are able to live uh, uh, free from the, the, the attacks or the works of others. Because when you let your uh, flesh get involved, when we talk about that Galatians 5, 19 through 21, those things will add to the non-peace in your life. If you are minding your business, paying your bills, loving your God, loving your enemies, helping people, you are not going to sit around with a weight of confusion or a weight of non-peace. You're going to have peace because you'll see other people that are walking around worried about everything. And you say, I got the same issues, but I got peace with it. And you've got to have peace with that thing. But you've got to understand that, number one, number one, what is the greatest blessing that is offered to us? What is the greatest blessing offered to us? All right. It is described as perfect peace. So what is the greatest blessing to offer to us? It's perfect peace. But with perfect peace, but, but what is perfect peace? And we're going to define perfect peace. This is the definition that we're using. It is a condition of freedom from disturbance within the soul. It is perfect harmony reigning within. Let me read it again. It is a condition of freedom from disturbance within the soul. It is perfect harmony reigning within. We go back to Romans 12 and 2. If your mind is not renewed, you're not going to have perfect harmony within yourself because what you're going to do is think things in the flesh rather than things in the spiritual. So now what you're going to do is act like the world does or you're going to try to answer evil for evil or you're going to try to work in the world system. You got me. I'm supposed to get you back first. You cannot do that because when you're working in a spirit and harmony in your soul, in your very spirit, if your mind ain't renewed, your soul ain't going to be right. It's not going to do it because what you're going to do is pollute your spirit and your soul because your mind, out of the abundance of the heart, the what? The mouth speaks. And when you ain't got peace, you'll lash out at folks who ain't even done nothing to you and be worse to folk who have done stuff to you. And then you say, I just couldn't help myself. You couldn't help yourself because you have not put that, that flesh under subjection and you have not gotten your mind renewed. There is nobody who ought to get your goat so bad that you are sitting up there and you acquiesce to cussing them out or how your blood pressure go up every time you see them. It, it should not have, not if you got the spirit of God in you. Reverend, you don't know what they did to me. Whatever they did to you, if you allow it still to linger, even, I didn't say you forgot it. How many of you know some folk done some stuff to you that uh, you, you ain't even ever forgot? I remember the guy that hit me in my lip. I got a, I got a cut right there. It's right there. He did that in 19, uh, 1991. That boy hit me so hard, I thought I saw Jesus. That boy hit me so hard, I I'm still want to find him so I can tell him, boy, why you hit me so hard? But, and, and, and there's a cut right in my mustache. That is a constant reminder to be careful how you enter fights that you ain't supposed to be in. That was my fault. He hit me first, but I should have walked up on that little short joke and he, he, he stole me. But anyway, he sucker punched me. Amen. But the problem is that, that if I'm still angry over that and when I see him, I promise you I'm going to get him, then I got a problem. If, 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 if I ain't got rid of it in 91, then that tells me I may not be fully renewed in my mind or I might not be truly saved. Now, that's a rough one right there. 
Because, see, when you cast, when you lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset, beset, uh, that besets you, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, you have to be so uh, uh, concentrated on the things of God, the attributes of God, the character of God, that you start to learn those things and you study those things and you want those things to be in you. You start to live those things out. So when you read the fruit of the Spirit, you say, I want that fruit of the Spirit. I want to walk in that thing. I want to live out that thing. But if your mind is not renewed and you don't have peace, what you're going to start to do is start blaming everybody and everything for the life that you have and the non-peace when you have when peace starts with you and Jesus Christ. And when you have Jesus Christ in personal relationship, you got a true relationship with God. There's no way you can walk around with non-peace. Peace will be in your life. And notice what it says this. It says it is a condition of freedom, freedom from disturbance within the soul. It is perfect harmony reigning within. Y'all remember that song we said, he reigns forever, he reigns forever and evermore, which means he ain't never coming down. He ain't never giving up the throne. He ain't never going to be second to nobody. When you got peace, you're saying inside of me, it's going to reign forever and it reigns inside of me, but I'm going to have peace no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm confronted with, no matter what I'm faced with, because it, it, now let me tell you, that does not mean it will not bother you. It don't mean it will not disturb you. But when I've got the peace of God, I know how to call on God. And in my very soul, I know God's going to take care of me. It's like the old folk used to say, my, my grandma and them used to play on that old world. and say, he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I'm his own. That's peace. And, and listen to this. The Hebrew word is called shalom. S-H-A-L-O-M. It has an idea of soundness of hell. So that to be filled with perfect peace is to be spiritually healthy, healthy and free from all discord within what? The soul. There can be no room for jealousy, envy, uh, uh, discontent, uncontrolled temper, selfishness, pride, intolerance in the soul which is filled with peace. For all these are disturbing factors of the heart. I told you, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you've got discontent, how many of you know somebody in your family or your extended family did you wrong? And I'm going to take it down another street. How many of y'all had to see something within the, see them within the last week or got to see them within the next few weeks? If you don't have your mind right and have peace in you, that stuff will mess with you where you can't even digest your chitlins right. Because what you're going to do is, you, you say, I can't even eat. Now, let me tell y'all, I love to eat. And because I'm on a diet, because I'm trying to get this weight down to where I, so I can live spiritually healthy and physically healthy, I cherish um, uh, 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 Thanksgiving and uh, Christmas. I eat ham, hog malls, uh, chitlins, and all that stuff. If I have anybody in my family where I, after not eating from November the 2nd to Thanksgiving, I hadn't eaten no ham, I hadn't eaten no pork, all I ate is baked fish and vegetables. On Thanksgiving Day, I don't care who was at my house. I don't care who table I was at. I was going to eat me some chitlins, some honey baked ham. I was going to eat some hog malt. I was going to eat all that. And I didn't care if you stabbed me last year. I'm going to say it healed good. And I'm going to, because you're not going to take my peace. And how many folks do we let take our peace? Because what they do is because of something they did or something we thought they said or something we heard they said. You've got to have such a peace inside of you that even if they said it to your face, I'm not going to let them take the peace I've got in my mind and my spirit because that's all I've got because that's the peace with inside of me. So you got to wonder about where your peace is. Well, you know where your peace comes from. It comes from Jesus Christ, but you can't let nobody take it. All right. Who has Mark 4, 36 through 41? Read that for me. Did they give her a mic? A mic right behind you. Hold on one second. Hold on. What's going on with these mics here? There you go. There you go.
the wind, and he said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of a man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? He said to them, Peace be still. He said to the winds and the waves. But notice what is in the direct correlation to the after part what he said. He says, O ye of little faith, those persons who don't exhibit peace, peace, you can surmise that there's a problem with their faith. Now, that's rough right there. Because you, not you, people want to blame everything else for their non-peace. When God says all you got to do is have faith. The disciples were on the boat with him. He wasn't on the other side. He was on there with them. And they're going to sit up there and the storm comes. They done seen him heal. They done seen him deliver and set free um, people who were blind, see, and lame walk. He done all that. A storm comes and they up there scared, crying. And, and so, don't you care that we perish? He spoke to the winds and the waves said, okay, winds, stop, waves, stop that. Okay, stop, settle down. It stops and he said, where's your faith at? Don't you know if you with me, Notice, he wasn't with them, they were with him because he was on the boat. That was the, that was the deciding factor, he was on the boat, which tells us if we go through things, as long as we know we with him, we've got to have enough faith in him to realize that God is not going to let us go through this by ourselves and we've got to have peace. Pastor, are you telling me if this happens, I ain't supposed to cry? I ain't supposed to get up at least one time a night. If I ain't, I ain't supposed to sit up there and try to figure it out, I didn't say that. I'm saying I've got peace that I know God going to handle this thing. There's some things that, amen, there's some things that, 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 that I've got to handle in the West Coast. And those on the West Coast uh, that are watching know i got to handle some things. I know y'all watching this morning, y'all in text and say, we watching Bishop, we on. Let me tell you, there's some stuff i got to handle like that. But somebody said to me the other day, you might have come. I said, well, I realize I can't fix none of this. It's Jesus that's going to fix this. And I'm going to stay calm till he give me the answer. And see, this problem, when you ain't got peace, you make wrong moves. I've got some churches I got to feel like that. I got to make appointments. I'm the bishop. <laughs> I'm the bishop. I'm, I get to be able to say, and thou shall go there, and it shall happen. And you know, I, I've made one, uh, two appointments since I've been out there, but I got some other appointments to make. Everybody said, when you gonna make the appointment? I said, when God tells me. Because what I found out, if Brian puts them there, they're subject to fail. If God puts them there, he won't let them fail. And you gotta have peace in that. Think about the decisions you are making in your flesh rather than your spirit. And then it causes more anguish and non-peace in your life because you made decisions that were not according to God but according to your ability to make in your flesh. So I'm just sitting back holding what I got. Dr. Newton, I'm just waiting. Just waiting to the Lord show me. I said, God, show me the face of the person. Give me their name and their social security number so I know where to find them, so I know exactly who they are because I don't want to move out of the turn of God. Pastor, what are you talking about? Bishop, what are you talking about? That's the same way for your life. When you don't have peace, you make rash decisions. You move when God didn't tell you to move. You, you, you go get stuff when God didn't tell you to go get stuff. You, 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 you solicit the help of, of ungodly folks because you don't think that God is able to handle this. And God said, didn't I take you through many dangers, toys, and snares, and now you are consulting folks that don't even have the level of spirituality to be able to give you the word of God? Stop having such a mind of non-peace that you start to seek stuff and get out of the will of God because non-peace will put you out of the will of God. It will. It will mess around and make you make bad decisions. How many of y'all made a bad decision uh, a long-term decision over a temporary problem. I done done it before. It's been a while, but I done done it before. And, and, and I shouldn't have made it, but because I thought I needed to fix it or I needed to handle it or God won't move in fast enough. And when he does that and you don't have peace, it gives you, you non-peace and you're dealing with this thing like the disciples. And then he, he rebukes them and says to them, oh, ye of little faith. How many times do you think God ever said that to you? 
or me? Oh, ye of little faith. Didn't you know I was going to see you through this thing? And that's what the peace is dealing with, all right? It is, first of all, it is a perfect, it, it, it is perfect in, qual in quality. And to say the perfect kind of peace is, there's an imperfect peace, the peace of ignorance. When we imagine that all is going well, whereas, in fact, in our eyes, we're open to see the truth, we know that all is not well. Jeremiah 6, 14, that's uh, Dr. Newton. Say it one more time, Dr. Newton. They dress the wound of my people as though it were not serious. Peace, peace, they say, when there is no peace. All right. So as they are saying this thing, even though those things, those wounds are there, saying peace, peace, when there is no peace, are you able to speak peace in the midst of chaotic situation? You, Sometimes you're going to be the only peace that somebody else sees. Because the Spirit of God lives in you. When we use the scripture, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who art in heaven. When that good work is in you and it's illuminating in you and you're walking through a, a, a dangerous situation, a tumultuous situation, and you've got peace, do you not know when folks know you're a Christian and you exhibit that God did it, then that draws them closer to him because they realize if you've got that kind of peace and we're in the same situation and I'm going crazy and you still got the peace, maybe I need the God that you got because obviously the thing that I got got me chaotic, but you still got peace. And that's the thing we have to do. You know, as, as we get ready to transition, and I preach Sunday about complete the assignment, and, and, and as, as, as Moses stops, now Joshua uh, takes over. A lot of people got a lot of uh, non-peace about the unknown. I didn't read your email, but I saw it. And there's always a reason to wonder what's going to happen, but there's never a reason not to trust God for it to happen. You understand that? So the only, the trepidation that I got right now is making sure I clean up my office quick enough for them to paint it so the new pastor can get here. I'm not worried about the success of the church because I know God and I know the new pastor knows God and I know the people know God. So if all of us stick with God, we'll have perfect peace, even though it's a new situation. And that, that's really what was going on with the Israelites. They didn't have peace with their deliverance. And they didn't have peace with the God who gave deliverance, so they started to blame Moses for their situation when it was God that brought them out. Moses was just a leader. So what he says is, since I delivered you and you'd rather be back in your graves in Egypt, I'm going to put you in the graves out here. I'm going to let you die out. Because you don't have peace with my deliverance. If I'm delivering you, I'm going to take you where I promise you. So what he does is extended the time, let that generation die out. Then he raised up a new generation. That's where we get Joshua 1. And he said, my servant Moses is gone. And he says to Joshua, I'm going to give you the land. I'm going to give you the territory that I promised your fathers and your father's fathers. Only be strong and courageous. What he was saying, just have peace with my decision. And you've got to have peace with the decision. It's not only with the church, it's with your life. It's with new opportunities, it's with new jobs, it's with things going on with your children, things going on with your life, your spouse, your health. You've got to have peace. It does not mean that you're not going to go on Google and look up what is this thing they just uh, diagnosed me with. That does not mean you're not going to be maybe sometime looking for alternative care or, or whether it be natural or whether it be uh, 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 pathogenic or whether it be prescribed. That does not mean that. You can still find out the information and still have peace in God. The peace of God says whatever happens, I still trust God to heal me. That's the mindset of peace. Amen, somebody. All right, so you, you can't be ignorant to the fact, but also notice this, there is also an imperfect peace of stagnation. The pool of water may be calm and peaceful, but underneath is foul and green with slime. Many men and women know only a peace like that. And one day, the shock of God's judgment will stir up their pool and they will find out that they have no real peace at all. There is also an imperfect peace of dependence, which is a peace which is dependent upon something or a person. How, 
unsatisfactory this is, for the thing may fail and the person may die. Then where is your peace? In contrast with these three kinds of imperfect peace, God has perfect peace. So you never depend on the situation, never depend on the thing. Let me tell you, people think money will bring them peace. Money may pay your bills. It may allow you to live comfortably. But if you ain't got peace in Jesus Christ before the money or when you get the money, you're going to be a rich person that has non-peace. You've got to understand, the Bible says money answereth all things. It did not say it solved all of your problems. You need to, you need to exegete, and exegete and excavate that because understand something, just because you got it don't mean it. Some of y'all get rich today and they find out and they put it in the paper that you just won $10 million. You ain't going to have no peace. Because first of all, I'm going to be calling you asking you where your tides at. <laughs> no, just play, just play, just play. Uh, and, and then your, your cousin in Puka and Shaquela, you know they're going to be calling. You know I prayed for you while you was at Thanksgiving that the Lord would give you overflow because he wanted you to. See, that ain't going to give you no peace. But when you have been faithful over the thousands that he's given you or the little bit that he's given you, God can then trust you with the multitude that he gives you and you will have peace because you say, I'm still the same person. I am still fearful and wonderfully made. I'm not going to get uppity or I'm not going to get uh, uh, conceited because I understand it was God that gave. When people don't have peace within their own self, they will allow titles, position, or riches to be able to change their personality because they ain't got peace within themselves. Y'all ever seen somebody who had a title and position and don't get it and all of a sudden they go off the deep end because they ain't got no peace within themselves. When you got peace of God inside of you, you realize that God can do anything through you. And when he can do anything through you, you don't need people, title, money, or position to make you. Ain't nothing wrong with that stuff, but that don't make you who you are. In fact, elevation ought to make you more humble because you realize I didn't do it and didn't have sense enough to do it. It was by the grace of God. Amen? Amen. All right, next. It is perfect quantity. That is to say it's a supply out of the sufficiency that meets our need. The marginal rendering of perfect peace is peace, peace, double peace. This is very significant when we turn to Philippians 4, 7. Who has Philippians 4, 7? All right, Doc. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. All right, I'm putting the, the theologian on the spot, but he's full ready. Exegete that, excavate it just a little bit for me, Dr. Newton, and, the, and, and that scripture. In Philippians? Uh-huh. Okay, so, so if we trust God, that means we put our faith in God, we understand that God is in control. So whatever uh, life challenge that we may experience that we can't take care of ourselves, when we give that request to God to fix our situation according to his will, not our will, according to how he's going to do it, and we fully trust that he's going to fix it, then his peace will guard our hearts and minds. We, we no longer have to uh, worry or be anxious about if we tend to worry and be anxious about it, it's because we're no longer walking in faith or believing that God is going to take care of our problems. Amen. Amen. Remember, we just keep talking about, thank you, Dr. New, where it says, guard your hearts. We just keep coming back to the heart issue. We come back to that heart. Now, watch this. The most, the most controversial part of the Lord's prayer is what? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's the most controversial part. People can say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. When you get to that part, on earth as it is in heaven, thy will be done. That's the key part they talk about. You've got to have peace to trust his will. Now let me tell you something. I'm going to just be honest with you. I've been like that for 20 years. I might as well just be straight up with you. If you ain't got the peace of God, you're not going to trust his will. You can't. You're incapable of trusting his will because you don't understand him. You don't understand his word, his will, or his sovereignty. You don't understand it. So what you do is question from a natural rather than operate in a spiritual. A spiritual is able to call sick heal, bad good, messed up straight. That's what spiritual will do. 
But when you walk from a natural point of view and say, thy will be done on earth as heaven, as soon as something happened that you don't think should have happened, um, then you know, oh, 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 no, 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 I'm, I made wrong decision. I guess I should have took care of it. I, 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 I'm going to call so-and-so. Because what you've done is, is you really don't trust his will. You won't stand on his word because you want your way. Your way will not always be his will and will not always be able to be seen through his word because sometimes we see darkly and then we see face to face. We see clearly. Some things, the deep things of God, we're not going to be able to see. Just because God don't show it to you don't mean you ought to go blow your brains out or go take some pills or go check yourself in somewhere. Sometimes you got to say, God, I trust you. I don't know how this is going to work out. I, 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 don't, I don't know why this is happening, but I'm not questioning you, God. But, God, I just need you to see me through this thing. And you know what we get? We, we get selfish. God, just show me. God, give me a sign. Sometimes what you do is, is cause him to hold back what he was going to manifest. Because that, now watch this now. Because you say, if you show me a sign, I'll be all right. Well, is that faith? Because what you're doing is, is saying, I will do if you do. That ain't peace. God, even if you don't. You remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They said, oh, king, we will not serve you. And even if we got to die, it's all good, because we will not serve another God. And when they put them in that fiery furnace and the four showed up, notice this. They said, our God will deliver us. But even if he don't, even if he don't show up the way I think he's going to show up, he's still going to take care of us. That, that's some Old Testament faith that they got right there. Y'all understand what I'm saying? They say, even if he don't, that's the thing. I'm not saying that you should not ask for, uh, 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 for God to reveal and manifest stuff to you. But if he don't, you cannot give it to your prayer on condition. Prayer ought to be without condition. That, Lord, I love you, I, I magnify you. And let me tell you, prayer is not just asking. It's not always an in, in, interrogative. A lot of times it's a declarative. God, I love you, I trust you, I magnify you, I lift your name up. You are holy, you are righteous, you are the one that keeps me from danger, seen and unseen danger. You are Yahweh, you are Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Sikhanu. See, ain't asked for nothing yet. See, the prayer or the lamentation of knowing that my heart, when my heart is overwhelmed, he leads me to a rock higher than I. God already knows your thoughts. He already knows your heart. What if you don't go and start requesting everything and just start to magnify his name and be able to say, God, I trust you to bring me out of this. I know it looks bad and people say I ain't going to come out of this, but I got peace. I'm going to walk out of here. My tears may roll down my eyes, but I trust you, Lord, and I'm going to keep my eyes living to the hill, which come my help, my help coming from the Lord. That is having peace in God. Does not mean you're not affected. Please don't think, and I want those who are watching all over the world to understand this just because I'm, when I'm going through that does not mean I will not feel the effects of what I'm going through please please don't act like we super say and we don't feel nothing I hurt just like you hurt I, I cry just like you cry my heart gets heavy just like yours get heavy that don't mean that those things won't come but I got peace I know that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I could ask, think, or imagine. That's what you have to have. That's peace. Somebody say, I got peace. I got peace. All right. Uh, uh, Dr. Newton, go to Philippians 5, I mean, Romans 5, 1. Did I get somebody Romans 5, 1? All right, go to Romans 5, 1. Reverend McLean, go to uh, 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 Psalms 121 and 4. Psalms 121 and 4. Now, understand this. The, the, when it talks about the quantity, and I'm going to read this while they're finding those scriptures. The double peace is also double in the sense that it is the peace with God, not only the peace of God. Read Romans 5, 1, Dr. New. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into the grace in which we now stand. Lord, have mercy. And we, Keep going. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And we both, and we both, in the hope of the glory of God, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, mm. perseverance, character, mm. and character, 
hope. Mm. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Now, that's, that's good right there. That, that whole, that's the whole dangling participle right there. Uh, go back to 5.1, um, media ministry. Go back to 5.1, 2, and 3. Therefore, since we have been justified through what? Faith. We have what? Peace. But note you had to be justified. You had to be justified through faith first. Faith in who? Jesus Christ. We have peace with who? God. Through who? Jesus Christ. So it has to come through Jesus Christ to be able to get to the Father. So when we call upon these things and we speak those things and we are able to claim those things, if you've if you got peace in Jesus Christ who is able to give. But go, go back to verse second. I mean, uh, second verse. Second verse. Through whom we have gained what? Access. Everybody in here, everybody in here to say has access by faith to this grace in which we now what? Stand. And we boast in the hope of the what? Glory of God. So the glory of God is on my life. It is with me because it is a part of me because God is resting on me through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by his suffering, by his crucifixion, by his burial, but most of all his resurrection. That's why you can't stay at Christmas too long. You got to get to Easter. You can't stay at the birth too long because the birth brought hope. But understand something that Easter brought salvation and redemption. So I need to go through him to be able to have that peace. So while he was on the earth and he was walking the earth and from the time he was born to the time he died, he was ridiculed, he was hidden, he was talked about, he was denied, he was rejected because that was a part of us to be able to show that suffering. He shows that he has to suffer and if we're going to suffer with him, we got to also, we want to reign with him, we got to do what? Suffer with him. So he shows us the suffering side in that of the flesh part, but you understand something, if this earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, I've got another building of God not made by hands, eternal in the heavens, which means I will not stay here and suffer forever. I've got peace to know that even if I die, I still get to live again. Even if I go through troubles and trials, he shall have the last say so, for he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So Jeremiah picked it up and said, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, plans to bring you good and not harm, to give you an expected end. That's to, for Jeremiah to say that means I got peace. I got for him to say that to Jeremiah and for him to be able to uh, utter it out or prophesy. He said, I know the plans I have for you. Jeremiah didn't say, I know what plans I have for you. God said, I know the plans I have for you. So if you know he's got plans for you and he's already showed you that it's going to work for your good. Why do you give up in the middle of the fight? That's the mindset and mentality you've got to be able to keep up with to understand this. God's got me. Go back to verse 3. Can't miss that. Dr. New read that on purpose. Yeah, not only so, but we also glory in our what? See, there it is. There it is. That's when peace starts to leave us. Because we don't glory in our suffering. We waver in our suffering. All right? Put it back up there. We glory in our suffering because we know that suffering produces what? Perseverance. That means you got to press your way through it. Go to verse 4. Go to verse 4. One little more. Go to verse 4. Perseverance. What? Character. So you know the character by people having peace because they've gone through and it builds character. And character what? Hope. And that's what we're talking about, the hope of our salvation, the hope of deliverance. That is the peace that we have. So any things that you go through, you got to understand something. I, 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 we used to say it here. If he did it before, he'll do it again. I ain't worried about nothing. Y'all remember that? That's too far back. Amen. But anyway, you got to understand that. All right. Let's keep going. That before you got here. Look at God. All right. Now, uh, 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 Rome, I mean, excuse me, Psalms 121 and 4. All right, uh, uh, Psalms 121 and 4, she's going to read it one more time. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. All right, God is not going to fall asleep at the wheel. He ain't forgot. Somebody said on a report one day, I guess God turned his head away from uh, our nation. No, we turn our head away from God. God ain't never turned his head away from our nation. When I say that, it means he sees everything. 
But I think a lot of times he says to us, you don't want to serve me? Go on and do what you want to do then. And I think he lifts sometimes and say, okay, when are y'all going to trust me? But we initiate it. If you want to know who God, who, who moved, it won't God. But what he does is he, he can't be everywhere. He can't be everywhere all the time, all the time, everywhere and still be away. But what we do is we move out of the, 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 the things that God has prepared for us. And when we get out of his will and we start doing things that are not according to the will of God, we automatically want to blame God rather than blame us. And then we don't have no peace. And we sit up there talking about, well, I wonder why God, God, no, -uh, God didn't do that. When you showed your lack of faith, that's what started to move you away from his presence. Because you decided that I'd rather worry in my natural than claim victory in my spiritual. You've got to have peace in whatever you're going through. And this is a rough time right now. This is a rough time. This is uh, it's stuff happening I ain't never seen happen before. I'm, I'm telling you, there was 50 bullets shot at that young man the other day. 50. 50. Now, I have no idea what it was. We can speculate. I don't know. I'm praying for his family. I'm praying that he knew the Lord Jesus. And I pray that he's around the throne with the Lord. But I'm also, also uh, marveled that people, even the passenger that was there was with him. And others in the store didn't get shot. And they didn't get hit with 50 bullets flying. Didn't get killed with 50 bullets shot flying. So while I mourn the loss of this young man and, 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 I, and I, I wish he was still alive, I still see the awesomeness of God because God decided to spare some people to give a testimony of what the Lord has done, but also to show us he's still in control. And that's the peace we got to have. So as I end, and there's more, and I want you to to look over your information because there's a little bit more left. You've got to understand that uh, number two says, how does perfect peace come to us? And we've got to understand as we read this and go over this, peace will come to us and it grows. Sometimes the thing, the peace that you need is not instantaneous. It grows. Faith worketh patience, patience, character, then hope. It, 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 it takes time. And when you go through stuff and see God deliver you, you can have peace through that thing. I don't react, amen. I don't react the same way and you don't react the same way you used to with non-peaceful situations. You don't even react to people the way you used to. You don't, you don't, because you've grown. And once you get the word, you can't help but grow in peace. Now, you can hear the word and not be doers of the word, which means you got a reprobate mind. But when you've got a receiving mind to receive the word of God, you're going to grow in peace because you will start to regurgitate those scriptures that came to you that you learned that you were able. How many of y'all have been in a bad situation and you couldn't get nobody else, didn't even try to call nobody else? You started quoting scriptures that you done read in your devotion time or you done just heard and, because that's that peace. So I, I would urge you to have peace through our transition here at the church, through the transition of, of government, through the transition uh, of things going on in the world. You got to have peace. You got to have peace. You cannot be so toe up in your mind and your flesh that you allow the enemy to rob you of your peace. Maybe there's somebody out there who wants to get saved. You've been sitting here listening to me all this time. You're at your job. You're in your car on your lunch break. You're in your house. And you're saying, you know what? I need that peace that all them people got in that church right there. You can have it, but you got to get born again. And if you will pray this prayer, this simple prayer, and say, Lord Jesus, up until this point of my life, I've spent it sinning against you. I believe, I repent of my sins. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you have been raised from the dead. And I believe that you are the Lord of my life. And I'm making you, I'm asking you to be the Lord of my life today. And say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and make uh, your, my heart your home. And I declare that I'm saved. If you have prayed that prayer that's on that screen and believed and repented on the Lord Jesus Christ, 
we believe that you're saved today. Call us at 855-979-9804, 855-979-9804, and you can be a part of the great company of witnesses that can be able to say that I'm saved, I'm born again, I'm, I, I've been redeemed by the blood, and you will have that perfect peace. If you're out there, if you're here, they want to get saved and want to get saved, you're in the sanctuary. Just come and come up here, and I'll lead you to Jesus Christ. If you are here and don't have a church home and want to join the church, I invite you to come. It's a great church to be able to join. I'm a member of it, and I want you to be a member of it. Amen. So, so come, if you're, if you're out there in, in virtual land, call us at 855-979-9804. 855-979-9804. We'll be glad to pray with you. That's a person seven days a week ready to pray with you, and we pray together every Monday morning at 7 a.m. Go to our website, simontemple.com, and get more information. We are celebrating the life of the Reverend Dr. Alfred Ferguson who was a long time pastor, over 40 years pastoring in the AME Zion Church throughout the Central North Carolina Conference. Him and his wife going up and down the dangerous highways and byways, also a business owner of Ferguson Tax Services for years right here on Yakin Road. His homegoing celebration will be to, um, Friday at 1 o'clock, viewing from 12 to 1. His homegoing celebration will be at 1 o'clock. Then, on a, on a lighter note and a, a, a happier note, we're having a celebration for Miss Carolyn Monroe tomorrow here, amen, as she retires from work, her second retirement. Retired from Sprint first, now from Simon Temple. And she, we're going to have, that's, she's retiring at the end of the year, but what we're going to do is have a celebration here tomorrow at 12 o'clock, and all of you are invited. Come bearing gifts. No, I'm just playing. Just come bearing gifts. And because uh, Miss Miss Monroe has put in a good day's work and then some, so she is coming forth to be able to to uh, uh, retire and spend time with her daughter in Atlanta and also here and just do nothing. So we just thank God for her. And I know her. She's going to be doing something even though we say she's doing nothing because I'm going to be calling her to do stuff. All right. So so that's tomorrow at 12 o'clock. Uh, those that are coming, please wear your mask, social distance. And we're going to have some kibbles and bits that we might be able to eat one chitlin and one piece of ham. All right. Let us pray. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds until the day of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a good day. Have a good day. A one o'clock appointment.